Good. Good evening and welcome to the Township Committee meeting of October 27, 2015. Ms. Borak, please call the roll. Committeeman Delcourt. Committee Woman McCauley. Here. Committeeman Sirachi. Here. Deputy Mary Burchette. Here. Mayor Thompson. Here. Please join me in a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Please be advised that in accordance with Section 5 of the Open Publics Meeting Act, Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975, that notice of this meeting was made by the posting of the bulletin board at the Hillsborough Township Municipal Complex and notifying the officially designated newspapers that the meeting would take place at the Hillsborough Township Municipal Complex at 7.30 p.m. on October uh, 27, 2015. First up this, meeting, uh, this evening is approval of the minutes. Uh, approval of the October 13th, 2015 regular session meeting minutes. May have a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Committee Woman McCauley. Yes. Committee Woman Sirachi. Yes. Deputy Mayor Burchette. Yes. Mayor Thompson. Yes. Uh, moving on to reports from committee liaisons. Uh, first up, since uh, Committee Woman Delcor is away on business, Committee Woman McCauley. Thank you this evening, Mayor. I'm not sure if this is working. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Uh, just a few mentions that I'm um, happy to announce that Hillsborough Township once again uh, got honored at the annual RideWise Recognition Breakfast as only one of two municipalities throughout Somerset County to receive platinum status in the state of New Jersey, the Smart Workplace, uh, workplace Program. Last year, Hillsborough was the first Somerset County municipality to achieve platinum. And Greg will hold up the award that we have received. Thank you, Greg. The ninth annual recognition breakfast was held on September 30th, and uh, the county business and government leaders gathered to recognize programs implemented to improve commuters' quality of life. RideWise is located in Somerset County and is a source for sustainable travel and alternatives that improve mobility, reduce traffic, and decrease carbon emissions. New Jersey Smart Workplace is a statewide program that recognizes employers and municipalities who show vision and leadership by providing commuter benefits to employees. So a few things we implemented here in Hillsboro were things like uh, we have a bike rack outside to uh, promote uh, biking to work instead of driving to work, maintaining an ongoing relationship with RideWise, including them in our uh, green fair this year, including alternative commuting information in new hire packets, and encouraging employees to register um, for traffic alerting sites and messaging systems are a few examples of what we have achieved there. Thank you. <laughs> the recognition further demonstrates our commitment to sustainability and improving the quality of life for employees who do work within the Township of Hillsborough. So we're honored to receive that award. A few things for public safety this evening. Obviously, Halloween is coming up this weekend. There is a curfew in effect for October 28th through November 1st from 10 p.m. through 6 a.m. Chief Kaminsky is not here this evening, but on his behalf is Lieutenant Mosguy. Uh, they like to remind residents of uh, concern for safety and those who participate in Halloween festivities. Anyone under the age of 18 shall not be permitted in public places in the Township of Hillsborough between 10 and 6 a.m. from the 28th through the 1st unless uh, the person is in attendance at a program or a function sponsored by the municipality, church, or uh, anybody is with over someone of 21 years of age. Halloween safety tips, also just a reminder, uh, wear light covered clothing if you're out at, in the evening, make it short enough so you don't trip over it. Uh, you can also put reflective tape on the sides back and front if you're out in the evening. Make sure children can see well through masks, watch for traffic, uh, a few helpful hints, and just um, make sure candy is wrapped and examine all candy when they come home. Uh, keep costume children away from pets and animals. Sometimes that scares them or they might not recognize them, and uh, that can, they can become frightened and otherwise get into danger. Um, a few recreation updates. The Halloween party is tomorrow, October 29th. Join us for, join us for a fun-filled day. Uh, it's a lot of fun. They do a great job here at the township year after year. There's a wonderful haunted house through the township. Take a hayride to the pumpkin patch, and uh, it's a $5 fee to come in. I think you believe, you believe you get pumpkins and a bag of candy, and uh, it's usually a very well-attended event. So if you have children, please come out and participate. Also, our first Halloween dog parade and costume contest is at uh, Ann Vans Middleworth, our new dog park recognition. There will be a uh, dog parade and costume contest, so please come out, register. It begins at 10 a.m., again on October 31st, 
Um, the parade will begin at 10.30 a.m. at the pavilion. There'll be vendors, prizes, fun for all, and uh, we look forward to having our first Halloween over at Ann Vans Middle Wars. So please come out and attend that as well if you are available. And I believe that's it for me this evening, Mayor. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Committeewoman. Uh, Committeewoman Sirachi. Thank you, Mayor. And I'm going to just keep my comments very short mm -hmm. so you can hear my voice. might not hold out. But trust me, I feel fine. <laughs> so hopefully I'm over this soon. So. Uh, Veterans Day. The 7th Annual Veterans Day ceremony will be held on Wednesday, November 11th at 6.30 p.m. here at the Garden of Honor. The program will include a ceremony at the Garden of Honor followed by a brief reception for participating veterans and their spouses. Um, yeah, it's always a privilege and an honor for us uh, to show our veterans how much we appreciate their services and sacrifices. Uh, they've made protecting the freedoms of our great nation. Uh, members of the public are also invited to attend to observe the uh, ceremonies at the Garden of Honor. And we ask that all those who attend uh, to please bring a canned item to be donated to the Hillsborough Community, Community Assistance Network. And for a list of items that are most needed, uh, you could uh, visit the uh, Township uh, website. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Bruchette. All right, from the planning department, Hillsborough Township was recognized at the 2015 New Jersey Complete Streets Summits for adopting a complete streets policy by the New Jersey Department of Transportation and the Federal Highway Administration and the Allen Voorhees Transportation Center. Complete Streets ensures safe access for all users, the ability for pedestrians, bicyclists, motorists, and transit riders of all ages and abilities to move safely along and across the complete street is the driving force behind our policy. Thank you, Gloria. From the engineering department, evening paving on East Mountain Road between South Branch Road and Amwell Road will begin this evening and tomorrow evening between the hours of 8 p.m. and 5.30 a.m. Expect delays and exercise caution when traveling through this area at those times. From the DPW, from the our Department of Public Works. The Department of Public Works reminds Hillsborough residents that the 2015 LEAF pickup and drop-off program will start Monday, November 2nd. This is a free program that runs through December, weather permitting. Residents are reminded not to rake leaves into the roadway as per Ordinance 2005-42. For more information and details, please visit the Hillsborough Township Department of Public Works website 2015 leaf pickup and drop off flyer or the office you can call the office at 908-369-3950 finally from the municipal alliance this is the this is this week is the red red ribbon week and uh, excuse me as I turn around and notice this is brand new to us and this is a uh, it's actually really cool um, this week is the red ribbon week at our last township committee meeting we issued a proclamation in further awareness of the dangers of underage drinking and use of drugs. You may have noticed all the red ribbons outside. Additionally, last year's poster contest participants are displayed outside in the hallway. Flyers for this year's contest are available outside in the hallway and more information will be in Friday's e-newsletter. Somerset County is sponsoring a suicide prevention workshop on Monday, November 2nd from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. More, more information will be in this Friday's e-newsletter. And also from the life, in life Skills in conjunction with the Municipal Alliance and Empower Somerset will host a 15-minute child break on Tuesday, November 10th from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. at the High School at the Hillsboro Middle School Media Center. A 15-minute child break is a free one-hour interactive PowerPoint presentation that informs, encourages, and empowers parents to listen and communi communicate effectively with their children in order to prevent substance abuse. Registration and more information will be available in Friday's e-newsletter. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> thank you. A couple comments from me this evening. Uh, first up, uh, I want to thank um, the Asian Indian Heritage Association who, uh, not this Saturday, but Saturday before that, held a Garba and Dandi event here at the high school. We had over a thousand uh, residents attend that event. It was great. Uh, Carl Sirachi, Community of Sirachi attended that with me. Uh, the event went until, well, we left at one o'clock in the morning, but I know it was going until three o'clock in the morning. And uh, it was a lot of fun, great event. Uh, and I just want to really thank them for including us again. This is, I believe, my fourth year 
uh, that they've included me. I know we, we figured out it was 10 years of coming in Sirachi attending those events, and it was also the 10 year anniversary. So, uh, always great when uh, we celebrate diversity here in Hillsborough, and it was an absolutely uh, fantastic event. So, again, thank you to uh, my friends at the Asian Indian Heritage Association for uh, putting that on again. Um, last Tuesday, uh, we, had, we dedicated a field in the Country Classic Bar par Ballpark, the Samuel Van Nest Field. Members of the Van Ness family were on hand as we honored a man who truly made a difference here in Hillsborough. For those who don't know, Sam Van Nest was a longtime resident and devoted community member, served the residents of Hillsborough through his dedication uh, and his tenure on the Hillsborough Planning Board for 21 years from July 1980 to December 2001. And during that time, Sam Van Nest served as chairman from 1983 to 1988 and vice chairman from 1992 to 1998. Most residents uh, who've been in town for a long time, uh, like myself and those serving up here with me, uh, would know Sam from another title. He was the owner of Ace Hardware in the corner of uh, 206 and Amwell. And uh, whenever you needed anything in this town, uh, whether it be uh, the odd piece that was installed in one of your homes in Woodfield Estates or some other area of the town, Sam kept it in the back. He knew exactly what you were talking about uh, and had that personal feel that you get from a small business owner. Uh, and, Sam was a great guy, made a lot of contributions to this town, and really helped develop and plan how this town was uh, being mapped out in the, in the 80s and 90s. And one other thing that he made, there's that ledge that runs across there. And when we had planning board meetings in here originally, there was no ledge. And whenever they tried to hold up documents, you'd have someone to hold it up and then put it down, hold it up again. Uh, Sam obviously thought that was a silly idea and knew how to use woodworking tools and built that for us there. As you can see, we moved on with technology a little bit, but um, Sam definitely made a difference, and uh, I was very really happy that we could dedicate a field to a guy who made such a difference here in Hillsborough. So, uh, again, to Mr. Van Nest and his family, thank you for everything and all your contributions to the town, and we hope that dedication ceremony uh, goes a long way of making sure we preserve his memory in the future. Also, as a reminder, the 2016 Hillsborough Town Planner calendar, which we mailed out in December, offers a tremendous opportunity to advertise your business to the residents of Hillsborough Township. There are both coupons and display ads uh, available in this calendar that is sent out free of charge to the residents, not at taxpayer expense, completely supported by the advertising. So if you're interested in advertising in that, uh, the cal in that calendar, please contact Jim O'Dowd at 973-227-4607 or email Jim O'Dowd at townplanner.com and we'll include that in our weekly e-news uh, to make sure you can click on there. I know it's been in there already, but we'll have that information in there. And if you're not already signed up to the e-news, in the back of the room you'll see these little cards. Fill out your uh, email address on there so you can make sure you receive that at the next, uh, every Friday. Also save the date for the New Jersey Devils game. On December 11th is the Hillsborough Township New Jersey Devils My Town Series hockey game. Uh, tickets are available at newjerseydevils.com slash Hillsborough and the special code is my Town Hills. that's H-I-L-L-S. Uh, we will make sure that's also in the e-news. We had a great turnout at our last one, so I'd love to see uh, just as many residents come out to that next meeting. Okay. We're going to move on to proclamations and presentations at this time. We will make now, uh, I'll ask you that if you receive your recognition, please resume your seat. We'll then take a brief pause after all the presentations uh, are made to allow you to leave. You're more than welcome to stay, but I certainly understand, because uh, I understand there's a baseball game on this evening for a team that I don't care about, but that's fine. Um, <coughs> yeah, I probably upset half the crowd on that, but as long as it's not the Philadelphia Phillies, we could all be happy about that, right? Um, so we will have uh, take a brief pause so you can leave at that time. Uh, and if you'd like to see any of those photographs that we'll be taking from this evening, again, the weekly e-news, we'll make sure we put out that through Twitter, on YouTube. Uh, you can get all that information by signing up for the uh, e-news, e which again is on the back of the room. Fill out the card and we'll make sure you get, it, get that. Uh, so first up this evening, uh, we're going to do a proclamation honoring the 2015 Royce Brook PGA JLG uh, All-Star Team. So guys, if you don't mind uh, coming forward. I see guys and gals, if you don't mind coming forward. Whereas 
the 2015 Royce Brook PGA G JLG All-Star Team had a very successful season because of their hard work and dedication. And whereas the Royce Brook PGA JLG All-Star Team is comprised of the following young athletes. Remember when I said you had to speak? You get to go first. Say your name and pass it My name is Josh Ryan. My name is Owen Rossman. My name is Egan McDermott. My name is Hannah Trin. My name is Logan Pacheski. My name is Jeffrey Lee. My name is Katie Lee. My name is Kaylin Sanderson. My name is Franklin Zhu. My name is Ethan Trin. See, that wasn't so bad, was it? We thought it was bad. And whereas the Voicebook PGA All-Star Team is led by head coach Anthony Latham and assistant coach Bill Balish, and whereas the team was named the 2015 New Jersey State PGA JLG Champions, the 2015 Mid-Atlantic Regional Champions, and is one of eight teams out of 2,500 that will be advancing to the 2015 National Championship this November. And whereas in 2014, the team won the New Jersey State PGA Championship, the 2014 Mid-Atlantic Regional Championship, and advanced to the 2014 National Championships. And whereas head coach Anthony Latham was the recipient of the 2013 NJ PGA Junior Golf Leader Award. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that we, the mayor of the Township Committee of the Township of Hillsborough, do hereby commend all the members of the Royce Brook PGA JLG All Star Team, not only for the awards and championships they have won, but also for their unwavering teamwork, dedication, and sportsmanship throughout the season. Be it further proclaimed that we, the mayor of the Township Committee of the Township of Hillsborough, Further commend Royce Brook, PJ, JLG, All-Star Team for the honor that they have brought to themselves, their team, and our community through their many achievements. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, uh, Township Committee members, for taking the time out to recognize our team and for uh, the applause that bestowed on these children up here. A couple people I need to uh, recognize. Um, the um, Allison Johnson is representing the New Jersey Golf Foundation. Uh, without them, this program does not work. It was a pilot program four years ago. There was only 100 teams in the whole country. As the mayor indicated, there was 2,500 teams this year. That's a, a growth. If uh, you can think of Little League World Series, everybody can relate to to Little League Baseball, this is the Little League of Golf. And these, uh, these kids here have been to the national championship three of the first four years. So uh, it's a pretty good bunch of kids in front of us here. Um, not just playing wise, as he put out, the sportsmanship wise. Uh, we've uh, received few awards, uh, obviously for our play on the golf course, but we've also received many awards for our sportsmanship, uh, the leadership and the teamwork. So I'm very proud of them for that. Uh, two other gentlemen here, the general manager of Royce Brook, Mr. Bruce uh, Grunlock, and our director of instruction, Bob Everett. Without them, we don't have a place to play. So with them and the members of Royce Brook, uh, we appreciate that. And uh, if I could just uh, take a little bit more of your time, uh, Allison just wants to say a few words, and it's important that the New Jersey Golf Foundation, like I said, is recognized because they're the financial backing and, and uh, the program has just grown in New Jersey alone. Uh, we went from 12 teams two years ago, I think there was 60 teams this year. And we have nine of them at Royce Brook. So our program is, is growing in leaps and bounds. So, Allison. Thank you. I'll be quick. But our goal at the New Jersey Golf Foundation is to bring golf to every child who wants to play in the state of New Jersey. And because these guys have such great sportsmanship, what they're not going to tell you is that next week's competition is harder to qualify for than to get into the U.S. Open. And for these kids to do this, these student athletes to do this, three or four years is tremendous. And so we are just so excited for you and so proud of you. And I know that the rest of the student athletes that are participating in the PGA's Junior League Golf Program are looking up to you. And so know that next week while you're competing, your New Jersey golf community back here will be rooting you on. So best of luck and we're really, really excited for you. So thank you very much. Thank you.
Congratulations, everybody. And more importantly, you guys are going to come back with the trophy when you guys win, right? <laughs> Every one of them is a better golfer than me, and I've been playing a lot longer. <laughs> so I believe we're turning it over to the Credit Card Advisory Committee. Marie, are you uh, ready? All the members of the Credit Card Advisory that's here, if you don't mind coming forward, too. This evening we have uh, four different nonprofit organizations that are being awarded grants this evening, and we'll be calling them up in a little a little while. Uh, the four groups that we are giving grants to this evening are the Hillsboro Senior Chapter A, the Hillsboro Rockets and Rocket, the Hillsboro Raider Diamond Club, and Cub Scouts Pack 1776. And again, we'll be bringing them up in a few minutes. We are. The total amount being awarded is $4,224.50. So since the program began, uh, we've awarded over $40,000 in grants to the community-based youth, senior, and local nonprofit organizations. Um, I'd like to introduce Cheryl here. She uh, is from Affinity, and she's, it's Affinity that sponsors this program. Good evening, everyone. I just want to say that Affinity is a proud partner of this of Hillsborough Credit Card um, that we offer, and as a result, we're able to support um, the grassroots um, organizations in the community. Um, that's really all I have to say. It's just wonderful, and congratulations to all the recipients tonight. Okay, and I'd like to bring them up. Uh, let's see. First, how about the Cub Scouts? Mm -hmm. Cub, Cat, Cub Scout Pack. 1776. Okay. Come on over here. Always a volunteer to hold the check. Now, they didn't get the whole 42. <laughs> they got a piece of it. And you got, I believe, some camping equipment, yeah. right? Yeah. And what did you get? What did you put in for? Uh, we put in for some uh, sports equipment for outdoor uh, camping events like uh, new volleyball uh, nets and things like that. It's for their camping, right? Thank you. Congratulations. Oh, they stole the check. You gotta, gotta bring the check back. <laughs> I don't think that's in the Cub Scout code. <laughs> I remember. I was in 1776 too. They didn't teach that. <laughs> okay. The Hillsborough Diamond Club. Anybody here from the Ah. And you want to explain what grant we gave you? Sure. Sure. I'm Brad Zickert, president of the Raider Diamond Club. We support the Hillsboro uh, baseball program at the high school, and we are going to be using this grant to put up some new padding on the center field fence with the Raiders logo on it. 
that is uh, desperately need desperately needed. So thank you very much. And I'll help our youth, right? Keep Absolutely. them safe. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you. Take a photo real quick. Congratulations. Uh, next, Hillsborough Senior Chapter A. Is anyone here representing them? Come on up. I believe there was some much needed shelving and storage facilities. Good evening, I'm Dori Guarniaro and I'm the president of Chapter A. And I have been, this is my second year and it's been a wonderful experience. I have to tell you, if you're going to be a senior, live in Hillsboro. <laughs> You'll all get there one of these days. The services here are amazing. I have five siblings in other states, they have nothing like what we have here. Maybe our taxes are high, but we're getting our money's worth. So we're, we needed cabinets for storage in our senior room and we were very happy that we were able to get them. Thank you. And finally, our own Rockettes and Rocket, are you here? Come on up. <laughs> I think you're all well aware of what they do. They perform many of the functions. Do we have to show? Yes. We have to show. Oh. <laughs> On behalf of Gloria Paget, who is our leader of the pack here, uh, she had personal reasons she couldn't be here tonight, but she wants me to thank the credit card committee again for choosing us as we use this money to purchase our different dance outfits. So come out and see us and you'll see how the township helps us out with our new outfits that we'll be performing at the high school in April. What was the date? April 9th, we're pre performing. There's going to be a, the township, I guess, is going to play against the uh, basketball again, yep. from what I hear. And we will be performing at halftime. So you'll see our new outfits then. Thank you. <laughs> Can I tell? Can I let them know what the outfits are going to be, or is oh, it a surprise? You'll have to wait. You could, but they would have to kill you. <laughs> and thank you. And thank you, uh, Credit Card Advisory, for the work you guys put in to review all these applications and to award these grants. And of course, to Affinity Federal Credit Union uh, for sponsoring the program at no cost to our taxpayers. Thank you again. Okay, last up this evening, uh, I believe we have Pastor Wolf here, if you don't mind coming forward, uh, who's going to do a presentation uh, for the youth services. Uh, we received a check from Somerset County, which is always nice. <clears throat> Pastor? This is a presentation of the check we just received today from the Somerset County Board of Freeholders for the Hillsborough Township Youth Services Commission. And it's an annual grant that every township in 
Somerset County receives from the freeholders. And with this, we do a few programs. We do Teen Zone with the YMCA. We do I Run for Girls at Auten Road Intermediate School. And then we do additional programs with fundraising money that we have. And you can see me some other time to get all those because there's a lot of them. And so here's our presentation, our annual $5,000 check to the township for the Youth Services Commission. It's always good when the checks are coming back from Somerset County. We do always greatly appreciate that. <clears throat> Again, I want to thank everyone for joining us this evening. I do understand that some individuals would like to leave at this time. Uh, my feelings won't be hurt. Uh, but again, thank you for attending. Please sign up for the E! News so you can get copies of all the photos. Follow us on Twitter and, uh, on, and YouTube so you can be able to see that. And again, thank you for coming out. And we'll take a five-minute break, Kaz, or two-minute break uh, until the time. Thank you. Have a good evening. You're good? Okay. Welcome right. back. Thank you again for everyone who uh, attended that uh, or earlier portion. We're moving on to new business. There is no new business on the agenda, so we're going to move on to public comment on new business and matters not on the agenda. So this is matters specifically not on the agenda this evening. So if you do come up, please state your name and address for the record, please. Okay. Please come forward. Again, state your name and address for the record. My name is Elizabeth McConville. Hold Can on you hear me? <laughs> My name is Elizabeth McConville. My name is Elizabeth McConville. I live in Bridgewater, New Jersey. And uh, thank you for letting me speak tonight. As many of you may already know, I worked for Doris Duke for 20 years and got to know her as very few people did. What you may not know is that I also worked for Hillsborough Township as the assistant administrator during uh, Mayor Biondi's time. In fact, I was personally recruited by Pete Biondi. I'm quite certain that if Pete Biondi was still with us, he would have agreed with the people of Hillsborough Township and the rest of the world and voted for the preservation of Doris Duke's home at Duke Farms. He was extremely fond of Doris Duke and very often spoke highly of her. He was very aware also of how much she meant to Hillsborough Township and to the state of New Jersey. Her generosity, <clears throat> her generosity to this state and to the rest of New Jersey, her, gen her generosity to this state and to the rest of the world is well known and legend. It is a testament to Hillsborough Township that Miss Duke chose to live here and to call Duke Farms her home, the only one of her many residences that she considered home. This is the one place where she spent the majority of her time, paid her taxes, owed it, and enjoyed the privacy that she so craved. From an economic point of view, it would behoove Hillsborough Township to preserve the mansion. It would bring in historical tourism revenue and boost real estate values too. As part of my position with Doris Duke, I was the one who rented many of her houses outside the gates of the estate with the assistance of Ann Van Middlesworth. Actually, Mrs. Van Middlesworth was the reason that I later became a realtor myself. I've shown many houses in Hillsborough and know personally 
how desirable real estate is here and what it means to prospective buyers that this is the home of the Doris Duke estate and where Doris grew up and actually attended the local public school. In addition, the Falcon Group has kindly offered to help start the restoration of the mansion at no cost. And now we have come to a point in Hillsborough history where your township's Historic Preservation Commission voted to demolish Doris Duke's home. If you don't already know, this vote has made the news across the rest of the world. <clears throat> the media aired the news in over 165 newspapers and television stations in places across the nation, in New Zealand, Africa, and Europe. The New York Post, the New York Times, the Washington Post, and the Wall Street Journal have published the story. In addition to all our New Jersey papers and national TV stations, such as ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, and News 12 here in New Jersey. To put it more simply, the eyes of the world are on Hillsborough Township. Doris Duke, never, Doris Duke never asked for anything for herself, but she has left a lasting legacy for Hillsborough Township and the world by establishing philanthropic organizations to promote the arts, secure historic preservation, and open her 2,700-acre estate for public use and enjoyment. And now, for all she has done, it appears that Hillsborough Township is blindly allowing her truly historic home and our ties to her heritage to be destroyed by the very foundation established to protect her legacy. As someone who knew her and knew her wishes, I am asking you, the Hillsborough Township Committee, to rethink the vote on the demolition of Doris Duke's home and to discuss with the Preservation Commission the imposing of a six-month moratorium on demolition. During the moratorium, the Preservation Commission, working with the people of Hillsborough, can come up with a better solution one that will honor the legacy of Doris Duke and preserve the heart and soul of Duke Farms for future generations. Hillsborough Township and all of you as the leaders of the government in Hillsborough still have a chance to preserve Ms. Duke's home and save the 19th largest home in the country and one of, a, of America's most well-known castles of the Gilded Age from being forever lost. This home is Hillsborough's claim to fame. Doris's home is Hillsborough's claim to fame, and we must all fight to save it. My hope is that with public opinion running solidly in support of preservation, you will take every possible action to stop this devastating demolition of her home. The community will help you, the private sector will help you, but you must now also help us by rescinding the demolition decision. I have written a book about my time with Doris Duke. It will be published shortly and is just waiting for its final chapters. You have the chance to preserve Miss Duke's home and be the heroes or have her home demolished and be the villains who voted to destroy her home. It is your choice and whatever way you decide, your decision will become part of history. Thank you for your willingness to consider helping to protect Hillsborough's reputation as one of the best places to live in the United States. We have packets for each one of the committee members. Just leave them down there. We'll, we'll, that, we'll have someone come get them. Okay. Um, that includes a postcard view of the mansion the Falcon Group letter with their offer, the list of the 165 media outlets that covered the 1015 decision, and my statement. And there is one copy of excerpts from the 165 media stories. Thank you very much for your time. Mayor? Yep. <laughs> Thank you. 
Mayor, um, I'd, I'd really like it if we, do we have the authority? I'd like to get a, a legal opinion. <clears throat> I assume you're asking if we have the authority to even weigh in or vote or have any sort of authority over the decision since it is before a lower body uh, with the Board of Adjustment. Um, Mr. Willard, do we have to take a motion or anything to ask you to well, do research or to well, come from, from back? From what I'm hearing, Ms. McCombo, uh, Ms. McCall, I guess Doris' organization is asking the Township Committee to rethink the vote and rescind the decision. And I'm sorry, and institute a six-month moratorium. Um, I'm not sure if the Township Committee has <coughs> jurisdiction to do so, but I know it's an important issue to the municipality. Um, I know it's an important issue to this uh, Township Committee. And if that's your direction, I'm, I'm happy to research it and find out what, what if any, authority uh, you do have to take any such action, if that's what the I'd, Township Committee's wishes are. I'm speaking right now for Greg and myself, uh, and I'll look at my colleagues if they're okay with that as well. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, looking at my, my colleagues here, I know Greg is uh, in favor of that, and I'm assuming Carl and Gloria, from they're nodding that they're okay with that as well. But I think in the, in the importance of doing our due diligence, uh, obviously I don't think it's appropriate for we, us to just vote on something tonight. I'd ask that our township attorney does do that research to see what, if any jurisdiction, this governing body has over that, uh, that matter. So uh, I'll be happy to do so, uh, Mayor, and I can report back. At Mr. McConnell, I uh, thank you for your, your comments this evening. Uh, obviously, I think you can understand that uh, we couldn't vote on something like that right away. We need to do our research to make sure if we even have that authority or if it belongs to the authority vested in the lower board uh, before uh, underneath us, if they're the ones that ultimately have that right uh, to make a decision. Thank you. Any other uh, comments this evening on matters not on the agenda? And I would ask if you're commenting on the, the, the Duke matter, I'll, I'll keep it that, I'll that you only, if you keep it brief and very, only very to brief, very, new, very new topics, because I think you understand. No problem. No problem. Okay. Um, I did want to mention that. Excuse me, a, sir. Oh, yeah, sorry. If you could your state name your name and address. And address, address My please. name is William Schmieding. I live in Raritan, New Jersey. Okay. Okay. Um, as I understand it, there is a time constraint on this um, information. They're looking to doze the house down as quick as possible. So, as I understand it, they're going to do it like now. From my understanding, uh, after having a brief conversation with our township administrator, mm -hmm. that there is nothing uh, fast tracked about this, that the process, they have to make several permit applications. And to my knowledge, I don't believe any of those permits have been uh, even sought yet. Okay. So, uh, okay. I, I do believe we do have some time. And I understand this is a very um, <clears throat> important matter for individuals on all sides of this issue so I would also like to mention that I was here at the last and final meeting mm -hmm. before they voted and uh, I was on the planning board of Glenn Gardner okay. okay so I do understand a little bit about meetings and I, I will have to say that I was my impression was it was kind of biased against the people who were trying to fight for keeping the mansion alive and well okay. um, and that was just what my perception, and as I said, being a planning board member, um, I know how people are, are treated as far as trying to be fair and honorable. I did not get that okay. from the board when I was here. They were very pro having it destroyed. They were very much against, this is again, my opinion and my impression. Absolutely. And uh, this is my only meeting I was here. Um, they were cut off continuously when they were trying to voice their opinion. They were actually limited to two minutes, and uh, that that was as much time as anybody was going to get. So I, again, whether that was legal or not, I don't know. But I just got the impression they were very angry towards, um, even though they were saying they were very fair and on, on a, um, not biased. That's what came across to me. So I okay. just wanted the board to know. That. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Yep. Any other comments at this time? Again, if this is new information, I, I think everyone understands that we're not adding anything else and we're going to be discussing this at a later date. Uh, sure, I'll be very brief. My name is Jim Tronosky. I'm a vice president with the Falcon Group, and I'm just here uh, reiterating our offer to provide professional engineering services and architectural service to assist in the restoration of the home. And we look forward to anything we can do to uh, assist in this effort. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Any other comments on matters not on the agenda this evening? 
I state your name and address for the record, please. And again, information that we don't already have concerning this, because again, as you heard, there's not much more we're going to take action on tonight. Certainly. Good evening, members of the chamber. My name is Ricky Lynn House, and I have lived in Hillsborough for 12 years, and that number is slowly growing. So tonight I do bring to you just a few short quotes since I too was limited at the last several meetings for your historic commission. First of all, over the course of however many months this has been going on, um, I've started to write, avidly in fact. And one of the things that I came across in my own self is that if you tell your grandchildren a story, you will impact their life. They will be interested in what you have to say. However, if you show them something amazing, they will be inspired, given this information. From C.K. Wolk, who cited on NewJersey.com, NJ.com, where most of our press has been released, he said that if as much effort is put into figuring out ways to save it, meaning the Doris Duke estate, today, as Mr. Duke put into it, creating it years ago, this could be possible. So I'd like to address again that you have the resources, the individuals, and the drive to get something like this done. And again, as I, I stated, yes. and I know you, you have heard, and I know everyone else here has heard, so my question, we, don't know, really, uh, hold, yes. hold I, we don't know what actions we can take. Mm -hmm. uh, this governing body is not going to take an action that is possibly illegal. So until Absolutely. I hear back from our council on the matter, I, I think everyone on both sides has to understand we're going to do what's legal, and we're going to do what's right, so you have to give us time to research that. And I appreciate everything you're adding and newspaper quotes, but I, I'm going to show you where, where, where the situation, we're going to hear back from our council. Absolutely. Okay. So that leads Thank me you. to my final question. Are you able to tell us what your position is with regards to the demolition of the Doris Duke residence? I personally don't believe that's appropriate at this time. I'll look over at our township attorney <coughs> whether or not that's something we can even get into. I, I would not, Mayor. Um, it's a matter before another commission. Uh, the appeal option that I'm aware of wouldn't be to the governing body, but again, I'm, I want to research uh, research that issue and get back to you. Uh, it, 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 same same as applied, the general, general scenario, we asked the township committee not to comment on active matters before the planning board or board of adjustment or so forth. It, so the same thing applies. Same thing applies. Right, thank so, you both so much. Once we hear back. Okay. Very appreciated. Right. Thank you. Thank you for your comments this Hi, evening. Ladies. Thank you. Any other matters not on the agenda this evening? <coughs> Hi. Hi. My name is Kathy Botzer. Could you state your address too, please? 109 Van Dyke Court, Hillsboro, New Jersey. Thank you. I just have a brief paragraph to read. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. So we're over here. <laughs> I am a Hillsborough Township resident and a member of Doris, which stands for Demolition of Residence is Senseless, and I strongly support the preservation and restoration of the Doris Duke residence. If you or any of the citizens in the township would like to help with this effort, please contact us at Doris Duke. 1932 at gmail.com. That's Doris Duke 1932 at gmail.com. We thank everyone for their interest and support. And I just want to add one thing. I was to the meeting on October 15th. Mm -hmm. And your member of the Historic Preservation Committee. John A. Shockley, Jr. I listened to his quote and I wrote it down. He said that he lived in Hillsborough for 50 years. He's never been to the Doris Duke estate and he has no intention to go to the Doris Duke estate. Therefore, he voted for demolition. And another one of your committee members, I will not mention, in public he slept through part of the meeting. So I just want to let you be aware of what went on at the last meeting. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> I can state your name and address for the record, please. Yes, uh, Kimberly Hansen. I live in Nishanik Station on Marshall Street. I'm a lifelong Somerset County resident. Thank um, you. I thank the the, uh, the board here for at least entertaining and looking into the possibility of researching the topic to to hopefully be able to save the mansion. 
i i find it disturbing that the historical preservation committee was never presented with a letter written by the head of the somerset county preservation committee asking them begging them to preserve the mansion for an economic and for a historical purpose that was never presented to the township the historical township commission committee here i think that's information that's very important and very relevant to what's going on in to hear them say that they'd never even seen that information is disturbing and it could have very well made an impact on, on people's decisions. So thank you for taking the time to at least look into the possibility. I don't see the, ru the need for the rush that the mansion's been sitting, it's there for 20 years. I mean, to look at things thoroughly and to step back and let everybody cool off and to hear, you know, to, to hear possibilities that the Falcon Group might be able to come up with for adaptive uses, I think, is a much better approach to doing this and, and rushing to, to demolish it once it's done, it's done. And uh, as far as adaptive use, I mean, the commission, the, uh, the foundation wants to have everything sustainable. There's nothing more sustainable than, than preserving what's already there rather than ending up in the landfill. So I thank you for taking the time to at least try to look at the situation from a different perspective. Thank you. Thank you. Any <laughs> other comments on matters not on the agenda this evening? Again, uh, state your name and address for the record and keep it brief because I think you've already heard what we're going to be doing tonight. David Brook. That's off. Okay, I think we're better. David Brook, 7 Winding Way in Hillsboro. Um, the concern that you've heard from any number of different folks, and I'm working with Doris and a member of Doris. Um, is, is the timeline associated with your question asked to Mr. Willard? The Historic Preservation Commission meets this Thursday, two days from now, um, presumably to pass a resolution. At this point, nothing is written in stone. And I would just ask that if you're going to get some kind of opinion, um, maybe you can facilitate that more quickly but I think the suggestion that was made by Ms. McConville is not so much that any of you take a formal action as much as having a discussion with the individual members. There's no prohibition against talking to them with regards to getting them to maybe potentially explain to you how they came to their conclusions and maybe asking them if they want to reconsider. I'm not asking any of you for a formal resolution because we know you can't do that. But so what who, we Mr. Brooks, who are you asking us to do that for? The members of DOORS or the members of the, the board? I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear your question. I didn't understand what you're, who you're referring to. What I'm saying is Ms. McConville and at least one other person asked for your opinions. I understand that you're not in a position to express your opinions. I see no reason why you cannot, but, but you're getting that advice, so I respect that advice. What I'm saying, though, is we're asking you individually as committee members to have a conversation with the individual members of the Historic Preservation Commission. Maybe if you have a chance to talk to them between now and Thursday, one, you can get a better sense of it, two, yeah, I'm hearing on, words back and forth. No, Am I, I saying something I that's out of turn? No, no, no. Rep, rep, finish up your comment, and then I think we'll, we'll have some other comments Maybe. back and forth. I want to finish if, hearing what you're saying. If there's some prohibition against you speaking with them, I've never heard of that. And I'm not talking about you as a committee. I'm talking about you as individual members. I'm sure you all have opinions on the proposed action that they intend to finalize on Thursday. One of the things that could happen at the meeting on Thursday is they could say, you know what, we want to reconsider. Maybe we didn't take everything into consideration as carefully as <coughs> we would have liked to have done it, and they could vote to reopen. They can do anything they want, right? And that's all we're asking is that many people, including myself, felt that the hearing process was somewhat less than open. There was not a lot of receptiveness with regards to hearing from the public with regards to this process. 
at that point, one begins to question the objectivity of the individual members, some of whom you heard people quoting. We were all a bit surprised um, by their different reactions. And one would like to think that a reconsideration isn't such a bad idea, and the idea of a six-month moratorium would make a lot of sense. A lot of sense because it gives everybody an opportunity to pull away from the emotions and focus on many of the other objectives, historic preservation, tourism value, other aspects that could allow a more reasoned decision and also allow more people to be involved in that decision. A six-month moratorium would also make sense from a number of points of view because there were no reports, as you probably are aware, that were ever submitted by the foundation. Not a single document other than a PowerPoint went into this record. And I'm sure when you talk to your attorney, when it comes to the issue of the potential for an appeal, the record is not going to be very persuasive should it go on appeal. So one of the things that I suppose, and you can talk about this in any way you want, and probably not in the public, but one of the things you may want to consider is if it does get appealed, <coughs> what's the likelihood of it being overturned? How much time and money gets wasted by the township if that's the case? And that's the concern that all of us have because you want to get it right. Um, and, and you may or may not be aware of this, but the foundation, the Doris Duke Charitable Foundation, made this decision somewhere around 2008. And the house has been let go, well, the house hasn't been maintained since that time. So there seemed to be a rush to judgment on the part of everybody who was from the foundation to push to get this thing through. We don't understand it because it's not like the house is going anywhere. And especially since 2008, one would question the appropriateness of rushing things now. The six month idea allows us all to turn what I will call a lose-lose situation into a win-win situation for everybody. And the other concern that everybody has is that 800-pound gorilla that's in the room right now. There's something else going on here. We all know it and we all feel it. And we're all concerned that there's something that's not being talked about in public. The silence on the part of this committee and the silence on the part of many other folks in the county and even in the state is about what really is going on with regards to the demolition. I only raise that because there's a concern that this foundation, the foundation that you all probably know is worth $1.79 billion, may be exerting some attempt at influencing people in ways that are an attempt to get what they want. Mr. Brooke, I have to stop you there. I resent that, uh, that accusation. Uh, there's no, and I'm, let me finish. Uh, when, when you make a comment like that uh, and you're insinuating something that is absolutely not true, uh, I, I do take offense to that. There is no 800 pound gorilla in the room. Uh, there is a conversation that's being had. We put it over to our attorney. We're gonna review it and we're gonna come back and make a decision, but insinuating that there's some sort of ulterior motive or that we have some <coughs> sort of plan that is absolutely not true, I take offense to that. There, there's no reason to insinuate that. And I think we've been very fair. Uh, we're, we're taking what Ms. McConnell said under advisement. We're putting it over to our council and to make accusations like that or insinuate things like that. I shouldn't say accusation, I apologize. Insinuate uh, something that is absolutely not true. I, I do take offense to that. So I, I do ask that you, um, when you're speaking, please be appropriate because it's that that is, uh, in my opinion, it's out of line to make an accusation like that. And I'm comments should be factual, not speculative. There's no insinuation or accusation when one makes certain observations about facts, when one sees township committee members marching back and forth in the middle of the meeting in the back, one has to wonder why. One who's not here right now, committee member Delcourt, 
standing in the back, muttering comments about things, as certain people overheard, one has to question what is going on. And I'll repeat what I said, insult or not, which is not an intention. <coughs> Mr. Brooks, per perhaps happened. what was going on was a committeeman who is on the governing body was interested in something that was going on within the township and a hearing before one of its commissions. Perhaps that was his reason for being there. Yeah, I, I have to be honest, Mr. Brooks. I, I walked into the meeting as well, but I saw two of my colleagues there. Uh, and felt that it was inappropriate if there was three of us uh, because that would constitute a majority of the governing body, so I walked out. Uh, that, that's, that's the reality here. And again, I, I have to tell you, I do take exception to those comments. I think that any member of the public, any resident of Hillsborough, would want to make sure that their governing body is well aware of any uh, meeting that's taking place. Uh, so I, I think it's perfectly appropriate that uh, I believe uh, Committee Delcor and at the meeting that I uh, stopped into until I realized that there was more than two of us uh, there, uh, Committee Member, or Deputy Mayor Burchette, who was also attending the meeting. I, I think as a resident, you'd, you'd appreciate that they had attend and be well aware of what's going on. I am always appreciative of when the township elected officials such as yourself attend meetings. and. I think the thing that you're not taking away from what I'm saying is, number one, I'm not here to insult you. I'm not here to make accusations, and I'm not here to provide any innuendo. I'm making observations with regards to the silence that has occurred across the town. Silence, as I'm sure all of you know, is an action. And the question is, is it acquiescence or is it support? And we just want to get a sense of that, and we want to make sure that there's a fair and impartial process to make sure that the best decision is made for Hillsborough. The concern that we all have is that's not happening right now. Okay. Be because of the fact that <coughs> the opportunity to take this structure and to reuse it for the benefit of the community and for Duke Farms Foundation is there. And the belief is that we haven't done that process a sufficient amount of time or effort. We're asking all of you to take a look at that, and hopefully you can get involved before the demolition permit is issued and weigh, on it, weigh in on it. That's all we're asking. We're asking for a fair shake to try to help save the structure and to have all of you be involved in that process. That place, we think of it as a gem. And I hopefully all of you think of it that way too. And not just a gem of an item, and I hate to say it this way, but a gem from the point of view of financial value to this township in so many different ways. When you look across the country at any number of different places that have had this sort of thing happen, in Florida, Ohio, all kinds of places, historic places owned by wealthy folks who have fallen into disrepair you look at all of these kinds of adaptive reuses and the benefits that it, it creates for each one of the towns is amazing. So it isn't just the historical part that I'm asking you to look at. It's also the value to the community that this place could bring in for all of those different adaptive reuses. And, and I will just leave you with one thought. The foundation said they did all this, but there's nothing in the record to demonstrate any of that. And that's the part that's difficult. I'm sure all of you live your lives based upon facts, as committee member Sirachi has indicated. Facts are what we live for. When you look at the record, there were no facts. At least, at least require that the foundation and you folks have a chance to look at that because if we think, we think that if you begin to look at the facts, you'll realize preservation is the best thing for this township. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments on matters not on the agenda this evening? Okay. Uh, seeing none. Sorry. Okay. I don't know if uh, we're going to be closing the, or moving on from public, so I don't know if you would like me to take a two-minute break. If you guys like to leave, you're more than welcome to stay. Okay. You guys. <laughs> I just wanted to. To know because I, I didn't want to interrupt the, the proceedings. All right, we're going to considerations this evening. First off, it's resolution number one ratifying confirming the submission of the emergency management assistance emergency management performance grant application. Uh, this grant is funded by and administrated through the state office of emergency management. The monies awarded can be used for various emergency management activities 
There is no financial obligation or match of the township associated with this. May have a motion. So moved. Second. Any comments from the dais? Comments from the floor? Seeing none, uh, roll call please. Mayor McCauley? Yes. Committee Sirachi? Yes. <coughs> Mayor Burchette? Yes. Mayor Thompson? Yes, resolution number two, waiving planning board subdivision application, GIS and escrow fees for the county of Somerset minor subdivision application for block 173 lots 8, 19, Wartsville Road. This minor subdivision application is, is to create a 90 acre lot that will be added to the Somerset County open space inventory. As always, we strongly support the open space both at the county level and here at the municipal level. We have a motion. So moved. Second. Any comments from the dais? Comments from the floor? Seeing none, roll call please. Mayor McCauley. Yes. Mayor Sirachi. Yes. Deputy Mayor Burchette. Yes. Mayor Thompson. Yes. Resolution number three uh, to authorize change order number one for the sanitary sewer installation on Winding Way. The OTS-NJ was awarded a contract for the sanitary sewer installation project and has been determined that the additional work of replacing existing stormwater pipe is needed for the project. This will not increase the overall project as is being offset by another light item which was not completely used. May have a motion. So moved. Second. Any comments from the dais? Comments from the floor? Seeing none, roll call, please. Uh, Mayor McCauley? Yes. Mayor Sirachi? Yes. Mayor Mayor Bichette? Yes. Mayor Thompson? Yes. Moving on to the consent agenda this evening, we have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Motion to approve consent agenda. Second. Thank you. Any comments from the dais? Any comments from the floor? I believe we have one. If you could please come up and state your name and address for the record, <coughs> Ms. Gulliford. I forgot her address. <laughs> we just forgot your address. Though. I forgot the address. Welcome. Susan Gulliford, Hunts Club Road. Uh, I have a question about consent item number six, which involves the Roycebrook Golf Course proposed Roycebrook Center. Um, I was just wondering, I looked into that last week after hearing about it, why did the Somerset County Planning Board know about it and Hillsborough Township didn't, or I guess what I'm asking is why, why did it go to Somerset County first instead of us? I mean, it's a huge project. The, uh, so the way, and if I state anything wrong, uh, Administrator, if you could uh, sure. fill in, but the understanding, uh, my understanding with any water quality management rule change comes from the county. The county has to make the recommendation to be included into a sewer service area. Uh, so it goes to the county first and they make a determination and they would look for either support or opposition from the township after their planning board makes that determination. Is that yeah, so we, we, we had an original copy as you stated earlier. Our, our copy that came in, our original copy was September 8th that we got our official consent. And in speaking with uh, with Walter Lane over at the county, we wanted to obviously get the county's position. So the official letter came to us on September 8th. So and okay. plans. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So the the official letter of consent came to us on September 8th. The letter back from the county uh, was received back on our office. Um, I'm looking at. The letter was written October 20th. We received it on October 26th, and we knew that it was coming, and here we are today at the meeting today. So okay. preliminary things, things that are in the works, don't mean anything until we get a letter of consent, a real piece Which of paper. The 20th, you said? Uh, September 8th was when With it came to our one, office. Right. Okay, the reason I'm asking is I went into our um, planning and zoning department and saw my usual people. Um, and they just seemed completely unaware of the whole project. Um, so what I did was the 21st, um, I went into Somerset County planning, the planning board offices in Somerville, and they had a complete exhibit and everything. I was amazed when I saw it. Then I found out that the evening of the 20th, they had in fact taken the action that you're supporting this evening. Correct. And I couldn't understand why right before that our planning department had not even been advised of the project. Yeah, again, we were, we were advised. Again, a lot of people come in here a lot of times with us and give us preliminary projects, but until we get a real piece of paper, which we got on September 8th. So looking at, at plans and 
and potential proposals. Mm -hmm. uh, when the county called us and said that they were they were in uh, receipt of that, obviously we want to look at the county and take that lead. The county has an overall plan, so we're looking at them for the lead. And obviously the township committee before them today has an opportunity to uh, support that plan as well, what's, what's on the consent agenda. Okay. Uh, kind of hope in the future when it's something this large, Somerset County kind of maybe moves things up a little bit and lets the neighbors know. My husband was raised in that development, so we're aware of when the Erickson project came up in 2008 and was uh, controversial and not received well in the Claremont development. Thank you. And before the, this project would ever see <coughs> any sort of meeting, obviously it would be well noticed and everything like that. So. Yeah, and just, and just one follow-up. I mean, there's, there's nothing before our planning board at all or any board of any type of a plan that's, that's before us. So. Okay. Uh, any other comments from the floor on the consent agenda? Yes. Again, uh, if you could please state your name and address for the record, please. Suzanne Oxy, I have 425 Willow Road. I'm a trustee of the Middlesex, um, Middlesex. Millstone Valley Scenic Byway, mm -hmm. and I did see in the press release that uh, the county did mention about the impact on the byway. It's a federal scenic byway, and uh, I'm glad to hear that you're being very careful about the intensity of that development and preserving uh, the watershed and the recharge area. So I thank you for that. And my understanding, you'd still have to go and get approvals from the Millstone Watershed Association. Uh, it, this, for this project to ever move forward, there, if it even came to the light of day, it's a lot of different steps that it would have to go through before uh, it would ever even start moving forward. So any other comments from the floor on this matter? Again, if you could state your name and address for the record, please. Thank you. Doug Eden, 55 Ann Street. Mm -hmm. I just uh, want to make a point that, or make a statement that uh, we had a missed opportunity um, at the time of the Erickson Community Project to change that property, uh, the zoning on that property from light industrial to make it consistent with the county and Hillsborough Township with the uh, green space, um, for, for, for green space. But, um, I mean, after everything that went on at Erickson and the uh, proposal from the Millstone Stony Brook Watershed, uh, Jeff Tittle from the Sierra Club, I think they made a lot of good points for that, to have that property changed from light industrial, and we may not be here right now talking about this project. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, before something could be open space, you also have to have someone who's willing to, to sell it for open space as well. But. I do. I, I understand what you're saying, uh, and I appreciate that. No, no. I, I understand what you. I, but I it do. Was never pursued. And I understand. It was brought up back then at the time when we, when we talked about the Erickson project. It's okay. private property, though. You understand yeah. that, right? It's yes, not township property. Okay. okay. Don't. We don't make that decision. Okay. On private property. Okay. Um, <clears throat> any other comments from the floor on this matter, or in, I should say, on the consent agenda? Seeing none. Uh, roll call, please. Okay, roll call. Yes. Vince Yes. Yes. Mayor yes. Thompson. Yes. Moving on the claims list, we have a motion to approve claims list 2015-20. So moved. Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mayor McCauley. Yes. Vince Yes. Mayor Bouchette. Yes. Mayor Thompson. Yes. Moving on, uh, that concludes our regular meeting this evening, but we do have an executive session. Ms. Brock, can you please read the executive resolution? We're in Section A of the Open Public Meetings Act. Chapter 231, the public laws in 1975 permit the exclusion of the public from a meeting in certain circumstances and whereas the Township Committee is of the opinion that such circumstances exist. Now, therefore, be resolved by a Township Committee. Township of Hillsborough, the County of Somerset State, New Jersey, as follows. Number one, the public shall be excluded from the discussion of the hearing after specified subject matter. Number two, the general nature of subject matter to be discussed is as follows. Contract negotiations, sanitary sewer project, litigation, affordable housing. Number three, the Township Committee may take official action on those Items discussed in the executive session upon completion of the executive session. Number four, the minutes of those discussions shall be made available to the public as soon as the matters under discussion are no longer of a confidential or sensitive nature. And number five, this resolution shall take effect immediately. Okay. May I have a motion? Some of Second. <coughs> Thank you. Roll call, please. Mayor McCauley? Yes. Mayor Sirachi? Yes. Deputy Mayor Burchette? Yes. Mayor Thompson? 
Yes, we now move into executive session. Thank you for attending this evening.